Hey everyone, so a slightly different video format today as I was supposed to be filming a tutorial on the tennis courts, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's pouring with rain here at the tennis club. So I've run off court, got into my car, and I thought I'd give you a bit of a vlog style video um, just to share with you some of the things that I've got coming up in the next couple of weeks, some of the things that I've been getting up to as well, and just to give you a bit of a behind the scenes look at what my life is like outside of the YouTube videos that you see. Um, and hopefully there'll be some value in this video for you to take onto the tennis court yourself. But um, yeah, you might have seen on a few of my community posts that I've actually entered some competitions recently. I've been selected to play for our county, Hampshire, for the over 35s team, as this year I have finally reached the ripe age of 35. What this does mean for me is there's actually going to be more competitive opportunities, as since I stopped competing back in my kind of late teens and early 20s, there aren't that many competitive opportunities unless you're entering futures tour events, which quite frankly my level wasn't there. Um, I was doing too much coaching and not training enough, and the lower level competitions tend to be pretty pretty much all doubles based and club based. But yeah, being selected for the county team was really, really cool. Um, obviously an honor to play for my county um, and a bit of an excuse to actually play tennis for myself as well. So the format of County Cup for over 35s is it's played across a weekend. You arrive on the Thursday for practice. You play matches on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Each day you'll play against a different county and within each county that you play, you'll play two singles matches and three doubles matches per team. Um, I anticipate that I'll be playing singles as I am new to the team. I'm the youngest member of the team as well. Um, the other guys are really, really good doubles players, which I would say my strength is on the singles court. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll get to play a singles and a doubles match for the team each day. I don't know how my body's gonna hold up. As you guys know, the mic up matches that I've been playing recently are really the only times I get onto court and, and train and play myself. Um, and they tend to be one a month. So not really enough to maintain a good level, but I'm used to that. As a tennis coach, when I play my occasional matches for the club, um, I get on court, I know the first couple of games I'm gonna be a bit rusty. So I tend to start off quite conservatively and just making lots of balls and trying to find my way into the set. And then kind of midway through the first set, I start to fill my groove and I start to play a little bit more aggressively. So um, I'm hoping that the Thursday at County Cup will be a good opportunity for me to get on court, to find my groove at that slightly higher pace. Um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to getting on court and battling against some, some different counties. So yeah, I've got that to look forward to. You may have also seen that I've entered the British Masters Championships for my age groups as well. I entered the over 30s doubles with um, a previous opponent of mine. Actually, he reached out after playing a club match and asked if I'd like to play. Um, and it's at Wimbledon. So of course I said yes. Um, and then I entered the over 35 singles, but... This morning, I sadly found out that I didn't actually get into the main draw acceptance list. I'm alternate number six for singles and number four for doubles, which is disappointing, but I kind of expected as I haven't played on the ITF Masters Tour for a couple of years. I did play one event um, in the over 30s a couple of years ago and managed to win it. So I've got a 100% win record. I actually managed to get my world ranking up to about 86. But unfortunately, because that was two years ago, my ranking has dropped off a cliff and I, I don't have a ranking anymore. A bit like how, um, you know, when Rafa made his comeback, he had no ranking. He had the uh, benefit of getting wild cards into events. Sadly, I don't. So um, currently as it stands, I'm not going to get to play at Wimbledon this year. But what it will do, hopefully, is give me a kick in the bum to get me to play a couple of events before next year comes around so I can get into it then. So that will be a bit of a goal for me. And I actually said to Jonas from, from Tennis Nerd that I'd love to play a doubles with him at some point in Marbella where he lives. So um, that would be really, really cool and definitely make a video for that one. On the subject of making videos around matches, I did think about filming my experience at County Cup later this week, but I've never really been a big fan of asking my opponents whether they're happy for me to film the match or not. And so um, I don't film it. The only time I film my matches is when I play mic tap matches, but my opponents are in it for that reason that they actually want to be on the YouTube channel. And I think it's unfair to 
um, you know, ask my opponent if they want to be filmed as it would definitely make a different dynamic in the match. They're probably going to feel a bit tense and nervous and I just think it's unfair. So, um, you know, I know there's YouTubers out there. I know Felix, one of my ex-players, um, obviously films all of his matches and I think it kind of comes with the territory with him. He knows that his opponents are expecting to be filmed and so it's different. But yeah, for me personally, I'm not going to film my matches. But even so, I've had lots of feedback that you guys would like to see my experience. So I might film some behind the scenes. Maybe if there are a couple of spectators watching, they might film a few of my points as well. But um, yeah, rather than actually making a, a match video, I may just do a slightly more vlog style video talking through my experience, how I prepared, what the matches were like, what the overall format of the, the weekend was like and that sort of thing. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to film any of it um, if it'd be interesting to you or if you're not that interested either final couple of thoughts for this video what racket to use i know you guys will be pretty interested in this i've been playing with the head speed pro for 10 or 12 years it's my racket of choice when i play matches i use the head speed mp for coaching quite a lot as well and it's really really difficult when you're playing competitively to make a change in rackets I'm not playing that competitively, I'm a coach and as you've seen I've reviewed tons of different rackets. I even use lots of different rackets when I'm coaching just to play around because I love the feel of playing with a different frame. But when it comes to competitions I always go back to what I'm used to which is the Head Speed Pro. However, you may have seen recently I've been testing out the Yonex Percept. Um, I've been testing out the 97 but I've also got the 100D to test out as well and I've actually really really enjoyed it. I haven't played competitively with it so it's hard to tell which one I'd perform better with but I'm actually toying with the idea of taking the Yonex Percept to County Cup with me. I'm not sure because I know that if I go with my head speed pros, I know what I'm going to get. I'm not going to be thinking about my racket. If I'm playing badly, if I'm playing well, it's going to be down to me. However, if I pick up a new racket, let's say the Yonex Percept um, 97, if I'm not having a good day, mentally I could be blaming my racket. And I don't want that. I don't want to have any excuses when I get on court. Um, but on the flip side, when I did go back recently to my Head Speed Pro, I felt that I was missing a few balls. It felt a little bit too powerful for me just because I was used to using that more control-oriented racket, the, the Percept. So I might just keep it in my bag if I feel that um, I need a little bit more control. Um, or I might leave it at home and just stick to my head speed pros as I know what I'm gonna get with that. So let me know again what you think in the comments below, but I'm definitely keen to try those two Yonexes, um, especially the 100D, because I think it will actually suit my game a bit better than the 97. Um, so I'll be testing those for a few more weeks after the event, but um, yeah, let me know what you think. Finally, going into my matches, I made a couple of videos recently uh, with a couple of tips that I'm actually gonna take onto the match court myself. So the first one is for doubles, and I made uh, an Instagram reel recently about aiming your winners down the middle of your two opponents as opposed to trying to go for the Hollywood shots down the line and angles and that sort of thing. Uh, down the middle solves the riddle was the quote that I used. And um, when I was watching Rafa and Carlos play their doubles matches at the Olympics, Rafa was so good at making smart choices and anytime he had an opportunity to really attack, whether that be a ground stroke or a volley, he'd target the middle of the two opponents at the other end, knowing that if he catches it slightly wrong, he's not going to make a mistake. Whereas Alcaraz on the flip side, early on in the tournament was aiming a lot more of his shots into the corners of the court so he was aiming for big down the line winners drop shot angles and unfortunately he made a lot of unforced errors on the back of that and that just kind of shows his inexperience on the doubles court yeah phenomenal player got great hands but almost used it too much so that's the first thing when i'm playing my doubles i'm going to try to play you know the smart choices um, and go more down the center of the court than going for passing shots down the line the other thing came from a coach that you may follow on here called Jonathan Stock. A really, really good coach. If you don't follow him, I suggest you do. And he actually said that when you're playing your matches, there should be six data points that you should be keeping an eye out for within your own tennis. I'm only going to list the first three because I think they're vital. The first is your return mistake count. So how many returns are you missing? If you're missing returns, you're giving your opponent free points. So the first thing you need to take care of when you're playing singles or doubles is just making balls on that return of serve. Really good way to apply pressure to your opponent. 
The second data point to keep an eye on is double fault count. That goes without saying. But, you know, if you can really limit the amount of double faults you hit, you're going to have a much bigger chance of holding your serve, which again at that high level is vital. I would say, though, let's extend that and really focus on first serve percentage. The third data point is how many plus one mistakes you're making. And when we talk about plus one, this is the shot that you play after your serve. This is a really common one. You know, lots of players hit the serve really well. They have a nice open space on the court and they go a little bit too big with that plus one. So when you're next on court, try focusing around minimizing your mistakes in those three areas, your returns, your serves and your plus ones. And if you take care of those three, your results will soar. And so, yeah, I wanted to add a little bit of value to this video. As I know, a vlog style is not normally what I do, but as it's pouring with rain here, I still wanted to give you guys some value. Let me know what you think of this format. I might do more of these as they're pretty easy to film. Minimal effort when it comes to editing for me as well. So I could even pump out one of these each week alongside my normal Saturday video. So let me know. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.